Have you ever dreamed of serving a show-stopping, restaurant-quality prime rib at home, but thought it was too complicated? Well, get ready to become a ribeye roast master. Hey there, it's CJ with Smoky Beginnings, and today I'm going to show you how to smoke the most mouth-watering, perfectly medium-rare prime rib you have ever tasted. Whether you're a seasoned smoker or a curious beginner, this video will guide you through every step of the process. From selecting the right cut to achieving that coveted smoke ring, I've got you covered. So fire up those smokers and let's dive into the delicious world of smoking prime rib. Let's do this. Not sure which ribeye roast to pick for your next meal? Let's explore the options together. Understanding these cuts will make your choice easier and ensure you get the perfect roast for your needs. First up, we have the bone-in ribeye roast, also known as a standing rib roast. This cut includes the rib bones, which can help insulate the meat during cooking, potentially adding more flavor and juiciness. It's a classic choice for many, especially if you love the presentation of a roast with the bones intact. The bones add that dramatic flair that's perfect for a special occasion. Next, we have the boneless ribeye roast. This cut is essentially the same as the bone-in, but with the bones removed. It is easier to carve and often more readily available at supermarkets. Plus, it cooks a bit more evenly since there's no bone to insulate the meat. And finally, there's a ribeye steak roast, which is simply a ribeye roast cut into individual steaks. This is great if you prefer to serve steaks rather than slices or a roast. Still not sure which cut to go for? Then ask your butcher. They're usually happy to offer recommendations. Or if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And while I have you here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Not only are you letting me know that you like this content, you're helping the channel grow. Now, today's special occasion is that we're at my mom's house. She lives in New York and me and my little family live in Florida. So we don't get to see each other all the time. We do our best to visit her every summer. And it is so awesome to get to spend some time with each other. In terms of the type of roast, I have a four and a half pound boneless ribeye roast that I picked up from Aldi's, which is a perfect size for a family dinner. Let's get this roast prepped and ready for the smoker. Now that we've got our ribeye roast, let's talk about preparation. We've got two great options, wet brining or dry browning. For a wet brine, mix kosher salt with water and submerge the roast overnight in the fridge. That's simple, right? This method ensures that the meat is seasoned all the way through. The dry brine option is just as effective. Rub your season directly onto the roast and let it absorb those flavors for a few hours before cooking. Since I picked up this roast earlier today, I'm going to go with the dry brine method. Whichever option you choose, don't skip this step. It's important. Think of it as letting your favorite band warm up before the big show. After brining, pat the roast dry and let it sit at room temperature for about two hours. This extra time ensures even cooking and gives you a chance to relax. Maybe even enjoy a glass of wine while you wait. Remember, patience is key when it comes to preparing the perfect roast. Trust the process. Now let's get to seasoning. When it comes to seasoning your ribeye roast, you have a couple of great options. You can go the easy route and buy a store-bought rub. Just make sure to choose one with a high salt content. Or if you prefer to make your own, here's a simple and delicious rub recipe. Two tablespoons of kosher salt, two tablespoons of freshly ground black pepper, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, one tablespoon of paprika, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, and one teaspoon of mustard powder. Funny story, the first time I made this rub, I accidentally used sugar instead of salt. Let's just say it was an interestingly sweet prime bread. But hey, cooking is all about experimenting, right? I'll leave this recipe in the description below. Today, I'm feeling a bit lazy, so I'm going with a store-bought rub. It's essentially a steak or Montreal steak seasoning that you can easily find at any grocery store. Make sure to apply a binder like olive oil to the roast first, then generously cover every inch with that rub. This will give your ribeye roast amazing flavor and a beautiful bark. And don't be shy with it, the more the merrier. With our meat prep, it's time to get the smoker going. Today, I'm using a Masterbuilt electric smoker. If you're not familiar with Masterbuilt smokers, they're very beginner friendly. Well insulated and maintain a consistent temperature. First, set the smoker to 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, place a prime rib on the middle rack of the smoker, insert a meat probe, like my trusty meter plus, link in the description to monitor the internal temperature. Some models of the Masterbuilt electric smokers come with a wired meat probe included and I've linked one of those models in the description as well. We're aiming for an internal temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything goes according to plan, it should take about 20 minutes per pound. And if you're new to smoking, be sure to check out my other videos on how to smoke ribs on a charcoal smoker. I'll leave a link at the end. While the prime rib is smoking, let's talk about wood chips. I love using a mix of hickory and apple wood for a balanced smoky flair. What's your favorite wood for smoking? Let me know in the comments. All right, our primary rib has hit that magic number, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to pull it out of the smoker and let it rest. I'll let it rest uncovered for 30 minutes. During this time, the internal temperature will continue to rise, reaching about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect for a medium rare finish. 
While we wait, let's fire up the grill and get it screaming hot for our sear. Speaking of preferences, I got another funny story for you. Last year, my mother-in-law commented that my prime rib wasn't cooked enough. Turns out she prefers well done. I was like, what? This experience taught me two things. Everyone likes their meat at different doneness levels. And number two, it's always a good idea to ask your guests about the preferences beforehand. So whether you like it rare, medium, or well done, no judgment here. Knowing your audience can make all the difference in your barbecue success. After our prime rib has rested and the juices are settled, it's time for the final step, searing. I'll sear the prime rib on a high heat grill to create the flavorful crust. Searing the meat gives you that beautiful caramel crust that adds flavor and texture. The Maillard reaction which happens during searing makes the meat taste better and it gives it a crispy outside. This crust pairs well with the tender juicy inside of the prime rib making each bite extremely tasty. And here's how you do it. Preheat your grill to high heat. You want it hot enough to sizzle when the meat touches that grate. Sear each side of the prime rib for a few minutes until you see a nice dark crust watching closely to avoid burning. Which brings us to step number three. Stay attentive throughout the process. The high heat can quickly overcome the meat so don't walk away from the grill. Remember, the goal is to caramelize the crust without charring the meat or overcooking the inside. Use tongs to gently press the meat against the grates if needed to get an even crust. A little tip here is if you see any flare-ups from dripping flat with the meat to a cooler part of the grill for a moment to avoid the burning. This final sear will make your prime rib taste even better and look great too. Once you've got that perfect crust, take the prime rib off the grill and let it rest for a few minutes before slicing and serving. Now for the moment of truth. Let's carve this baby. I'll admit, by the time that the roast was done, I was feeling pretty lazy. So I made a game time decision to slice it into thick, juicy steaks instead of going for thin slices. Sometimes you have to listen to your gut. As I cut into the roast, just look at that perfect medium rare. Pink center, gradually fading into a beautifully seared crust. This is what barbecue dreams are made of. The smoky aroma filling the air is enough to make anyone's mouth water. When you serve this up, watch your guest's face light up. I don't know about you, but for me, there's something magic about presenting a perfectly cooked piece of meat. Whether you're slicing it thin or cutting it into steaks like I did, make sure to let everyone admire your handiwork before digging in. After all, you earn those ooms and ahs with your smoking skills. And here's a pro tip. Save those end pieces for yourself. They've got extra seasoning and a bit more crust. Consider it your reward. And there you have it, perfect medium rare ribeye roast smoked on the master built electric smoker. This recipe proves that electric smokers can produce fantastic results, with our roast turning out deliciously tender and packed with awesome smoky flavor. All that's left to do is now carve off a generous slab, add your favorite sides, and enjoy every mouth-watering bite. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more smoking tips and tricks. For those hungry for more, check out the playlist at the end of this video. It's packed with charcoal grilling and smoker recipes for everything from chicken and ribs to burgers and Steaks. For even more jewelry recipes, head over to smokybeginnings.com. I left a link in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel and fuel my caffeine addiction, you'll find a link for that below too. Until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.